What's up, Star Family? So today's video, <laughs> this is really close to my neck today, is about my number one tip for surviving eclipse season. Honestly, this is like my number one tip for surviving the human experience in general. And that is simply to do your best, your absolute best, to not attach importance or labels or meaning onto whatever it is that you're experiencing. Because when we attach labels or importance or meaning to what we're experiencing, it's almost like we're claiming it. We are then claiming that experience. You, your, your identity then starts to merge with what is inherently very transient, right? If you guys really start to pay attention to your, to your mind and how quickly and how frequently it jumps ship and gets back on and then jumps and gets back on it's like i would never take advice i would never take advice from someone that is as hot and cold as the my own mind right and this is where it becomes imperative that you lean into that into that part of yourself that is grounded and that knows better what i have noticed over the years is when you guys are in a pocket when you when we're in a pocket of trauma or in a pocket of healing, or in a pocket of discomfort, or shadow, or whatever it is, it's like we've been there for an eternity, right? It's like we feel like we've never, we've not seen the light of day ever. And the same is true for when we are in a pocket of sun, or when we're feeling really good, it's like we're like our whole lives <laughs> have been just this awesome, magical, I don't know if this is like working, but this awesome magical dance and ride, right? When you create an identification with what it is that you are experiencing, you're also creating the space for you to then loathe your experience and loathe yourself for having the experience. And you create a space that becomes easier for you to perpetuate those illusions. Eclipse season is known to bring up to the surface things that we don't generally see about ourselves or it, it tends to exacerbate the karmic knots that have been with us the longest. The things that have the ways of being, the attitudes, the behaviors that we are very often found running from most of our lives. Those things that we feel are keeping us tethered to our humanity. Right? The things that we resist the most end up persisting the most, right? It's because you're literally, the more that you resist it, you're actually creating more karma through that resistance. It's one of the reasons Ram Dass, when he talked a lot about karma and dharma. One of the reasons he talks about when you do get to this, you know, when you do understand just the nature of it and how it's all just like unfolding. And a lot of beings that have come from law of, att law of attraction backgrounds don't like to hear this. It's like you're kind of just watching it all unfold. And the lightness that you feel becomes greater than anything that could come into your life. And the lightness that you feel when you're having, no matter what's in front of you, the lightness that you're feeling is not because of what's happening. It's not attached to what's happening, but it's because you're not creating more karma in that moment. That's why what you resist persists. Because if you're resisting it, you're creating more karma. You're creating more, you're perpetuating that energy, right? That action, that, that mental action of loathing something or of not wanting something to be there, seeing something is inherently flawed or inherently wrong is creating karma because it goes against the truth of how things actually are, which the truth of how things are is that thing, it just is. It just is what it is. But all is, all is God, right? And all deserves the same amount of respect and true freedom really is being able to relate to the great things that are happening just as much as the negative things or the heavy things, right? And so again, coming back, eclipse season can be very intense for many people. Again, it's not like burying your head in the sand and it's just really important to understand how you're relating to the things that are coming up for you. Again, you're not making it mean anything negative. You're not, you know, choosing not to identify with things can also come from, from a place of feeling like they're so low and they're so human that I don't want to identify with it. That's not where I'm coming from. That's still coming from a place of 
being shameful or feeling like there's something wrong with the human experience. And maybe that's why you're here, because you think there's something wrong with the human experience. Could be, starseed, who knows? But it's coming from a place of not putting more importance on what's coming up, not making it mean anything about the truth of who you are, the core of your identity, which is perfect. It's just as it should be. So don't identify with it. Don't, as much as you can, like labels is almost like claiming it. Like when you, when we label all of the psychological patterns that we go through, we try to self-diagnose ourselves. We're actually doing such a big disservice because whereas the energy can just be more free to move in the light of your pure consciousness, by attaching a label to it, you've just made it a thing. You've just made it a something. Then it become it lingers versus just letting it be transient, letting the emotions you feel just come and go as they will, right? Then, it, then it's nothing. You've just removed the importance from it. Doesn't mean, again, that you are running from it. If anything, you are becoming much more aware of it because you're just allowing the pure presence of yourself to shine on it. That's also when you're undoing karma is by that pure presence, by that pure awareness, right? But not labeling it, not making it mean anything, right? A lot of the, the time, you guys, the, the karmic knots that we're in have less to do with the thing itself or like the addiction itself or the eating disorder itself. And it has more to do with the loathing that comes from that being in our field or what we've then made it mean about ourselves inherently. That's generally what keeps us in the cycle of karma versus if you were to be like, all right, this is what I'm going through. I'm gonna watch it unfold. I'm gonna love myself throughout it. I'm not gonna make it mean anything. I'm just gonna watch it unfold. Then you've just un you've allowed yourself to release so much of what's keeping you tethered to that, what's keeping it in your field. Try it out, see how this works and you know, take it, let it, uh, apply this to some of the deepest karmic wounds that you have. And for a lot of us, there's maybe just like two, three, there's maybe a handful of things that have followed us around throughout our entire incarnation that could be very, could be really easily transcended, whoops, <laughs> transcended and we could close the gap a lot sooner if we didn't create so much identification with it right, in eclipse season, like this is your supercharged time to lean into those energies and to let them come up and to be as present and as aware as you can to what's coming up, right? You can er eradicate and undo a lot of those karmic knots and karmic trenches during this time. So lean into it. It's all good. You're where you're meant to be. I'll talk soon.